May 1st, 1878, was the opening day of the Paris World's Fair, and people came from all over the world to marvel at all the exhibits on display. For example, an early prototype of Alexander Graham Bell's telephone, also the finished head of the Statue of Liberty. But what really blew people away, what literally stopped people in their tracks, was this. It was something that looked like an upside-down umbrella or maybe a lampshade, and what it actually was was a solar-powered machine. And it was invented by this man, Augustine Mouchot, a French mathematician and inventor. And what you're seeing here, the cone was covered in mirrors that reflected sunlight onto the boiler at the center, which was filled with water. It created steam to power a small steam engine that was hooked up to another new invention called a freezer, which made ice. And so the people were simply, their minds were blown that this guy, Augustine Mouchot, could create ice from sunbeams. Now, we fast forward 35 years to 1913. And on a blazing hot June day, the cream of British colonial society in, in Egypt gathered in a small farming village called Mahdi, about 12 miles south of Cairo. They had been invent, uh, invited there that day by this man, a Mr. Frank Schumann, a self-made American inventor. And he had brought them there that day to unveil something that would have looked like this. Several rows of trough-shaped mirrors with boilers at their center that reflected sunlight a little bit like Mouchot's machine, but in this case, it was used to pump water, to create steam to pump water from the Nile River all the way to this farming village several miles away to irrigate the desert to allow them to grow cotton. And again, people were simply astonished that such a large, powerful machine could be powered by the sun. There was nothing else like it in the world at the time. Now, we fast forward once again all the way up to the present day. And it's worth wondering if these guys, more than a century ago, can invent such powerful, inventive machines, well, how far have we come? How far have we come today when it comes to using renewable sources of energy? Let's look at some numbers. 0.2%. That represents the amount of energy produced in this country, in the United States, by solar power. 0.2%. 0.5%, that's the amount of solar energy produced all around the world. 3.3%, that's the global renewal, renewable energy generation, not including hydro. Now, these numbers tell a story, but what kind of story do they tell? And I'll admit that when I first began my research on a book that I wrote, wrote about renewable energy and I encountered these numbers, it was, I was chagrined. It was a little depressing because it seemed to me that I was embarking on a project to write a story about, essentially, about failure. That in more than a century since these early inventors, we had really not come very far at all. That these technologies had barely made a dent. But then something interesting happened. The more I dug into this research, specifically, the more that I dug into the past, and I met people like Augustine Mouchot and Frank Schumann and many, many others, well, my thinking began to change radically, and I realized that if these guys could be with us today, they would be simply astonished at how far we've come. If we could somehow transport them in a time machine, a solar-powered time machine, hopefully, to our time, and they could visit, for example, there it is, if they could visit, for example, one of the many factories around the world pumping out tens of thousands of high-tech solar panels every day, what would they make of that? If they could visit Denmark, where wind power generates nearly 30% of that country's electricity. If they were to go to Germany and see what's happened there when they generate more than 3% of their, their electricity from solar power, well, they would be simply amazed at just how far we've come because it's important to understand, actually, let me go back. It's important to understand that, back, there we go. It's important to understand that Frank Schumann, Augustine Mouchot, they were lone wolf inventors. Their machines were one-offs. August, Augustine Mouchot, he won the grand prize at the World Fair that year, but he never made another solar machine because the money dried up, coal became more abundant, and he never returned to his work. Frank Schumann, similarly, 
had grand plans to build giant solar-powered uh, devices all around the world, and then World War I happened, and he never returned to that research. But today, we are seeing the growth of renewable energy all around the world in places like Denmark and Germany, and even right here in Bloomington, Indiana. As you can see in this image, there are more and more. When I started my book, there were hardly any houses around or buildings at all with solar panels on the roofs. And now I walk around my neighbor neighborhood, I walk around town, I see them all over the place, as you can see here. If you go to the Indianapolis International Airport, you'll see a large solar array there producing a significant amount of electricity. Up in the northern part of Indiana, a large wind farm producing lots of energy. So we've really come an amazingly far away, but only if you see it from a certain perspective. So once again, when we look at these numbers, they do tell a story, but the story, the story they tell really depends on how you look at them. And I believe, after doing this research and meeting these fascinating historical characters, that they tell a story of hope and perseverance. If you care about the environment, if you, if you are concerned about climate change, these numbers, perhaps counterintuitively, should inspire you to take action. Go ahead and put solar panels on your house. It's a good investment. Go ahead and invest in renewable energy projects. It's a good investment. Because as the stories of Augustine Mouchon and Frank Schumann have taught us, we are not at the tail end of a failed experiment, but rather we are very much, I believe, at the beginning of a significant revolution in how we produce and consume energy. The technologies are growing every day. As you can see in this one image of the solar collector, it looks a lot, in fact, like Augustine Mouchot's invention from more than a century ago. There are wave power machines collecting energy from the ocean's waves. Other kinds of massive solar collectors in the desert, wind farms, geothermal plants, even underwater turbines drawing energy from our rivers and tidal zones. This story, though, I believe, comes to life only if we look beyond our present moment and we look to the history of renewable energy, a rich and complex history that helps point the way to a more sustainable and renewable future. Thank you very much.